Hi, today in class we had these little cards and we did the IPS lab. We see things on these cards a little bit different than we see on our traditional periodic table. We can see that it has um, whether or not this element will go to a positive or to a negative electrode. So you can see these can go to positive. And it also tells us what, how it will combine with chlorine during a reaction. So to summarize the lab, all we did is we took these, let me zoom out a little bit. We took these different elements, we put them in order, but you already have familiar you're already familiar with the periodic table, so you already have a heads up against the other kids in the IPS classes. So we can see as we move across the periodic table, we have an increase in mass. As we move down the periodic table, again there's an increase in mass. So if you had these weird elements, such as copper and zinc, you should be able to provide a rationale to support or reject a placement of an element on the table, such as zinc going here. Ideally, everyone could tell me that zinc does not go here, such as because the periodic table this is increasing in mass. If this has a mass of 85, the 65 should come before that. So 65 would go in the row above that. And again, the copper would also go before the zinc because of those masses. Let's go down a little bit further. So that was that. And then here's your worksheet for today. Oh, my phone's in the way. So how many electrons does sodium? Sodium is Na. So ideally, if you're looking at your periodic table, sodium is in group 1, so it will donate its one electron. Oxygen is in group 6, so it will accept two more electrons, and that should be on your periodic table. We're making compounds today. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So what you're going to do first is you're going to write the symbol of the two elements. So boron is B, oxygen is O. I'm going to use two different colors. You're going to write the charge as superscripts. So boron is in group 3, so it has a positive 3 charge. Oxygen is in group 6, so it has a negative 2 charge. We no longer care about the if it's positive or negative. We're going to take the number and we're going to crisscross them. We're going to crisscross the superscript so they become subscripts. So this 2 is going to go there, and this 3 is going to go here. So when boron and oxygen react chemically, it's going to do so in a 2 to 3 ratio. Here are some more examples. Tomorrow, this is all we're doing in class today. Tomorrow, this is all we're going to do. More samples. So sodium, chlorine. Sodium is in group 1, so it has a positive 1 charge. Chlorine is in group 7, so it has a negative, seven, a negative 1 charge. We're going to crisscross them. So when chlorine and sodium react, they do so in a 1 to 1 ratio. You could put the 1's down here, but you do not have to. So as your math class, when x is there, present, it means that there's already 1. It's assumed because it's there. Next, we're going to have aluminum fluoride. Aluminum is AL. Fluoride is F. Aluminum's in group 3, so it has a positive 3 charge. Fluorine is in group 7, negative 1. We're now going to crisscross just the number. So when aluminum and fluorine react together, they do so in a 1 to 3 ratio. Next, we have lithium bromide, lithium and bromine. Lithium is in group 1, so it has a positive 1 charge. Bromine is in group 7, so it has a negative 1 charge. We're now going to crisscross our exponents. When lithium and bromine react, they do so in a 1 to 1 ratio. Next we have potassium sulfate, sulfide. Potassium is K and sulfur is S. Potassium is in group 1, so it has a positive 1 charge. Sulfur is in group 6, so it has a negative 2 charge. We're now going to crisscross. So when potassium and sulfur react together, they do so in a 2 
to 1 ratio. Now we have calcium and selenium. Calcium is in group 2, so has a positive 2 charge. Selenium is in group 6, has a negative 2 charge. Let's cross them. When they react together, they do so in a 1 in a 2 to 2 ratio. Here it says up here that we can reduce when possible, but for right now I'm not absolutely certain, so I would leave it unsimplified, but if you were to see a multiple choice answer that only had C-A-S-E, I would pick that one because that would be a simplified. But for best practices, do not simplify because I'm not certain. Next we have cesium and fluorine. So we have C-S and fluorine is F. Cesium is in group 1, has a positive 1 charge. Fluorine is in group 7, negative 1. Crisscross. When they react, they do so at a 1 to 1 ratio. And that's what we have, and we're going to uh, do more practice tomorrow. Bye-bye.